Urinary incontinence is a really common problem for so many women and there's a common misconception that it is isolated to women who have had children and also even more than that people who've had children through a normal vaginal delivery whereas actually incontinence can happen to any woman. It's more of an issue for women than for men and that's partly to do with the anatomical structure and the length of the urethra in women which is much shorter than in a man. However there are things we can do about it. What's important is to realise there are different types of incontinence as well. There's stress incontinence and there's urge incontinence. And so this is something you should have a proper diagnosis for so that we can make sure we're treating you the right way to address your appropriate concerns. For most women, this is something that just involves a small amount of urine leakage or a feeling that when they need to go to the bathroom, they need to go very quickly and very urgently. And all of these things are important to think about because it can create anxiety in your lifestyle if you're suffering with these things. So what can you do about it beyond wearing an incontinence pad which for some women by the way if it's needed is a really good thing to do because it just means you're not worrying about wet patches leaking through when we're talking about simply at home there are some supplements that might be worth trying there is some data around pumpkin seed extract being useful for urinary incontinence and the other potentially useful thing to try is soy based phytoestrogens because certainly when it comes to menopause, the incontinence tends to be associated with a drop in estrogen levels, which in turn means that there's less density and support of the pelvic tissues. And soy phytoestrogens can help this. There is actually a product which contains those two ingredients, which has good patient use data called Jude. I don't have any personal experience with it, but it is something that if I struggled with this problem, I personally would try. The other thing is to think about pelvic floor health. And I would urge every woman to think about this not to think about it once it becomes a problem but to work on your pelvic floor health first you can do this at home through kegel exercises which you can google and you'll find lots of youtube videos on how to do good kegel exercises but there are also devices that can help and maybe the most commonly known one is the lv which you insert into the vagina and it sort of gamifies pelvic floor exercises so that can be quite a fun way to look at it and approach it now there are also prescription medications, whether that is going on to hormone replacement therapy or actual medications for bladder activity issues. And some people do need these, which is why it's important to be in the hands of a doctor for these diagnoses. When it comes to what we can do in clinic, one option is the Mcella chair. And this is a throne-like structure, which you sit on fully closed and it sends electromagnetic pulses into the pelvic floor muscles, which is equivalent to doing more Kegel exercises than you could possibly dream of doing and you have two sessions a week for a course of treatment and the length of that course will depend on the severity of your symptoms. Another option is to go down the route of treatments like radiofrequency or laser devices for intimate rejuvenation and these work again by providing density to the tissues of the pelvic floor and for some people also platelet-rich plasma injections. I will urge that these must be in the hands of a specialist, either a gynaecologist or a GP with a special interest interest in gynaecology. They should not be being done by just anybody. It's important to really know and understand the anatomy of this area thoroughly. Above and beyond, there are options. It doesn't need to involve living with crippling anxiety or embarrassment, and it doesn't have to be that the only option is surgical. Please do seek help. Know there are options and there are things you can try at home first. If this content has been useful for you, please give it a thumbs up or send me a little message below and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.